Hello everyone and welcome again. So continuing our discussion about clinical pharmacology basic principles class. And now we are going to talk about the drug metabolism. So after the drug is administered by the patient, it gets absorbed and then it gets distributed. And after the distribution, the drug uh, metabolism uh, occur. And it is also known as the drug biotransformation. And the goal of the metabolism or the biotransformation of the drug is to convert the drug from lipid uh, soluble uh, into uh, water soluble. So it could be executed through uh, the, uh, the excretion routes, which are the uh, urine, the sweat, the tears. Uh, most of them are water soluble are watery like exec executions so the drug has to be uh, converted to water soluble to be executed and that's through the metabolism process and in this video we will talk about some general facts about the drug metabolism the phases of hepatic metabolism phase 1 the CYP450 enzymes and the CYP450 enzymes inducers and inhibitors and then we will talk about the phase two. So let's start. So the liver is the major site of uh, metabolism of the drugs in the body. Metabolism also can occur in the kidney, uh, lung, and other body tissues. Uh, some drugs are not metabolized at all and executed unchanged, uh, some of them because they are water soluble so they can be executed easily without being metabolized. And now, metabolism of drugs might lead to four possibilities. Uh, the first one is that the drug is active and when it gets metabolized, it gets uh, inactive. And that's the condition with most of the drugs. So most of the drugs are uh, when you give them are active, but when they get metabolized, they get inactive. The second possibility is that the drug is active and when it gets metabolized, it would still be active. Uh, and that makes the drug would have prolonged action. Prolonged action because it is active even after metabolism. Uh, an example would be the codeine, which is an opioid painkiller, is metabolized into the morphine, which is also an active painkiller, which is even would have stronger action than the codeine does. Uh, yeah, and uh, this is the second possibility. The third possibility is that the drug is inactive when you give it to the patient, but when it gets metabolized, it gets active and that's what we call pro drugs uh, example for that would be the enalapril enalapril is an ace inhibitor angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor uh, and when it gets metabolized it would be metabolized into the enalaprilate which is in the active metabolite for the enalapril and that's what the what is uh, what to produce its effect the fourth possibility is that the drug is converted from non toxic uh, from non toxic into toxic compound and example for that would be the paracetamol when it gets metabolized by the liver uh, some of it might turn into the uh, non an acetyl uh, benzoquinone MNI, uh, and that's abbreviated as NAPKI, and that's a toxic metabolite, uh, but it is detoxified immediately in the liver. Uh, now let's talk about the phases of hepatic metabolism. We mentioned before that the liver is the major site of metabolism. Now the liver metabolizes the drugs in two phases. The phase one is that uh, the, the liver converts uh, 
So the phase one is, uh, is related to conversion. It converts the drug from lipophilic into more polar so molecules, into more water soluble compounds, and that's by oxidation, reduction, and hydrolysis. Uh, the phase two, on the other hand, uh, is conjugation of the drug into water soluble molecule and excretion occurs. Meaning, if the liver can't convert the drug into water soluble molecule, it attaches the drug that is not convertible to water soluble. It attaches it to another water soluble molecule that can be excreted. Uh, so here the liver would cover all type of drugs, even the net convertible ones. It, it only conjugates them to another uh, uh, water soluble molecules and would be excreted easily. So the drug uh, enters the phase one to be excreted as water soluble compound. If not liable to conversion, it would be, uh, uh, it would enter the phase two then to enhance solubility and enhance elimination. So next, let's talk about the phase one reactions. Uh, we mentioned that the phase one reactions include the oxidation, uh, the reduction and the hydrolysis. So reduction and uh, hydrolysis. So most drugs are metabolized by oxidation, uh, which is the first process here. That's when most the drugs are metabolized by. Uh, inside the hepatocyte, which is the uh, functional cell of the liver, there is vesicles attached to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So if we have a hepatocyte here, let's say, and we have here the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, we have some vesicles that uh, contain uh, so inside the vesicles, there's a lot of different enzymes that cat catalyze, catalyze the phase one uh, reactions, including the CYP450, cytochrome P450 enzymes, the alcohol dehydrogenases, the deaminases, the esterases, and other type of enzymes. Now, majority of phase one reactions are done by the CYP450 family, the cytochrome B450 family, which is also called the mixed function oxygenases. And we mentioned before that they are located inside the membranous vesicles uh, on the surface of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum of the parenchymal liver cell. The membranous vesicles are also called microsomes. So the CYP450 also present in other tissues like the kidney, the testis, the ovaries, and the GIT, and they work by oxidizing the drug to make it water soluble. So basically, the CYP450 are related to uh, oxidation process of the phase one reactions, and they occur inside the microsomes, which are the membranous vesicles. Uh, some of phase one reactions are non-microsomal, meaning they don't occur inside the membranous vesicles. Uh, so uh, an example for them would be the xanthine oxidase that convert the xanthine to uric acid and the monoamine oxidase which oxidize the catecholamine and the serotonin. Uh, now let's talk more about the CYP450 enzymes. So, the, those enzymes are involved in oxidation of the drugs, as we mentioned before. Uh, this is a, a phase one process. And they are a class of enzymes that has more than 50 different enzymes. Five of them metabolize 90% of the drugs. And all of them involved in oxidation. Uh, and most important one is the CYP3A4, uh, which is responsible for oxidizing 50% of the drugs. Uh, the CYP450 system is important for metabolism of many endogenous compounds, such as the steroids and the lipids, and it is also involved in biotransformation of exogenous substances such as the drugs, the carcinogens, 
and the environmental pollutants. Uh, genetic polymorphism of several clinically important CYP450 enzymes is a source of variability of drug metabolism in humans. That explains why some people would have toxicity with some drugs and some people would have uh, no effect for some drugs because those enzymes would be uh, different in different people due to genetic polymorphism. And the drugs may be metabolized by only one CYP450 enzyme. Such example would be the metoprolol uh, is metabolized by the CYP2D6 or by multiple enzymes such as the warfarin, which is metabolized by multiple CYP450 enzymes. Uh, now let's talk about the CYP enzyme inducers and inhibitors. So some drugs, when oxidized by the microsomal enzymes, the cytochrome B450 enzymes, uh, they increase the activity of the CYP, and those are called microsomal enzyme inducers. So they increase the activity of the CYP, uh, and those, this would lead to the short, shortening the half-lives uh, of those drugs, so they, sh they have short half-lives, and they also shorten the half-lives of the drugs that are taking with them uh, and metabolized by the CYP enzyme. Because those drugs would increase the activity of the CYP, they, uh, they shorten their half-lives and shorten the half-lives of other drugs are taking with them. Some drugs, when oxidized by the CYP, they decrease the activity of the CYP and those are called microsomal enzyme inhibitors. So they are the opposite of the first one. Uh, but most of the drugs, they don't induce, neither inhibit the CYP. Uh, now here we have a comparison between the CYP enzyme uh, inducers and the CYP enzyme inhibitors. So the CYP inducers, they increase the rate of metabolism of some drugs leading to decrease their serum levels and therapeutic failure. Because they increase the activity of the CYP, this leads to, uh, to the other drugs that are metabolized by the CYP, they would have uh, low levels and this would lead to therapeutic uh, failure. So the drug would not be effective because the concentration of the drug would be less than the uh, therapeutic concentration. Uh, in comparison with the CYP inhibitors, those decrease the rate of metabolism of some drugs, leading to increase their serum levels and toxicity, uh, meaning they would decrease the activity of the CYP uh, and this lead to the CYP not metabolizing the other drugs that are metabolized by the CYP and those drugs would have uh, increased their, their serum levels, they would have more than normal concentrations, and this might lead to toxicity. CYP enzyme induction uh, requires prolonged exposure to the inducing drug, meaning with the CYP inducers, they would, they would require pro prolonged exposure to the inducing drug uh, to be induced, while with the CYP inhibitors, they require short period of the exposure to the inhibiting drug to be inhibited. Uh, examples for the inducers, we have the phenobarbital, which is the first, the phenytoin, uh, the carbamazepine, the third one, the rifampicin, the fourth one, uh, smoking also would induce the St. John uh, wort herbal med. This is the sixth example. Examples of the CYB inhibitors, we have the cimetidine, we have the ciprofloxacin, we have the erythromycin, we have the grapefruit, ritonavir, uh, which gives a powerful inhibition, the ketoconazole, six one, and the omprazole is the seventh one. And those, the examples, uh, need to be memorized 
because they are imp very important. Uh, also, we have some uh, clinical examples here. So the rifampicin, ref the antibiotic, accelerate uh, the metabolism of the contraceptive pills, leading to failure of contraception. Uh, that's uh, a CYP inducer example. Uh, the phenytoin is also a CYP inducer, which is an anti seizure med, uh, and axolize metabolism of cyclosporin A, leading to graft failure, leading to graft rejection. That's in patients who have uh, a transplantation of another organ into their bodies, and they are taking the cyclosporin A. Uh, if they have, if they randomly took phenytoin for uh, any reason, whatsoever, or maybe they have seizures, uh, this would lead to acceleration of metabolism of the cyclosporin A and would lead to the rejection of the transplantation. Examples for the CYP inhibitors, we have the Omprazole, which is a proton pump inhibitor. Uh, it inhibits metabolism of warfarin, the anticoagulant, leading to the accumulation of warfarin and because of the warfarin is an anticoagulant, when it accumulates, it would lead to uh, bleeding. Uh, another example would be the erythromycin, which is uh, which inhibits the metabolism of the theophylline, uh, which is a bronchodilator, uh, leading to toxicity of the theophylline, uh, which is a card uh, in form of cardiac arrhythmia. So the erythromycin is an antibiotic and which inhibits the metabolism of the theophylline, which is a bronchodilator leading to toxicity uh, in, in form of cardiac arrhythmia. Uh, now let's talk about the phase two of the hepatic drug metabolism. Uh, as we mentioned before, if the drug can't be converted by phase one, then it must be, it must go into phase two where it gets conjugated to another water soluble molecule. So if the drug can't be metabolized by phase one, uh, then liver conjugated with a water soluble molecule and executed through phase two. And the idea of conjugation is that to bind the drug with another molecule that is uh, water soluble. And the water soluble molecule is mostly the glucuronic acid, that's for the most of the cases, which get conjugated to drugs and executed through bile meaning it's executed through bile and into two feces. And most, uh, most drugs that is metabolized by conjugation is executed through bile uh, and kidney can't execute the conjugates. So they mostly go through the bile. So glucuronyl transferase is a set of enzymes that are responsible for the majority of phase two reactions so they are responsible for the conjugation of drugs, which is a phase two reaction. And this set of enzymes is also located inside the liver microsomes, which are again, the membranous vesicles inside the smooth endoplasmic reticulum of the liver cell. And they are also liable to induction uh, by drugs and is possible site for drug interactions. Example would be the phenobarbital induces the glucuronidation of the thyroid hormone and reduces their, their plasma levels. And some glucuronide conjugates secreted in the vial can be hydrolyzed uh, by intestinal bacteria. And the free drug can be reabsorbed again by the interior hepatic circulation and this extends the action of the some drugs. Meaning some conjugates, so when it get conjugated, some drugs when get conjugated, it would be secreted in the vial and into the intestine. And inside the intestine, there's bacteria that, that uh, lead, that might lead to hydrolyzing the, uh, the conjugate. So the uh, conjugate, conjugate, uh, gets uh, hydrolyzed by the bacteria and this would be would lead to the uh, drug becoming free again 
because the bacteria would uh, the hydrolyzing process would uh, separate the drug from its conjugate uh, or from its conjugator and that would uh, release the drug free again and it would be uh, conjugated again uh, and it would be secreted and it is a vicious cycle but every time so let's say that the drug 100% uh, is conjugated and 100% is secreted here uh, some of it would be lost uh, because the bacteria is not 100% uh, efficient so some of the drug would be lost and every time the drug concentration that reaches the serum would be less and less until the drug is fully executed uh, example for the conjugation process is the oral contraceptive pills uh, so the oral contraceptive pills, uh, they are giving, given every 24 hours, uh, uh, every uh, 24 hours, uh, and they contain oestrogen. So oestrogen, uh, when it gets into the circulation, it gets conjugated by the liver. So conjugation uh, process and from the liver it would be executed through the bile uh, and the bacteria in the intestine would hydrolyze the estrogen so hydrolyzed hydrolyzed uh, by intestinal bacteria and this would lead uh, to the estrogen reabsorbed again it would be free again and it would be reabsorbed and this would prolong the action of estrogen into uh, 24 hours. Uh, but if the female that is taking the oral contraceptive pills uh, took uh, another uh, drug with them, like an antibiotic, like the cephalosporin, the cephalosporin, uh, this would, the cephalosporin would kill the intestinal bacteria so kill intestinal uh, bacteria and this would lead to the bacteria not hydrolyzing the estrogen and the estrogen would be all executed together uh, uh, by two to three hours after the intaking of the oral contraceptive pills and this would lead to the so estrogen would be executed quickly and would uh, lead to a failure of the oral contraceptive pill and would lead to pregnancy that occur in the uh, female that is taking those uh, pills so a final note is that the liver also uses another molecules for the conjugation other than the glucuronic uh, acid and those are like the acetic acid, the amino acid, the glycine, the sulfate, and the glutathione. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support more, you can buy subscribing to the Patreon link provided in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and peace.